G'day guys, welcome back to the truest football YouTube channel you will find on the net. I'm Jesse and in today's video we're going to be doing another tier maker and this one is an absolute thinker. You can tell I'm bored uh, because this one took a little bit of research. What we're going to be doing today is ranking the teams based on their AFL decade between 2010 to 2019 who are actually the big teams of the competition the last 10 years. This tier maker will spell it all out. So basically what I did was research every team's decade, see how many times they made finals, that made the top four, how many flags and what they'd won, and also how many spoons they'd won. And ultimately, we're gonna put it into a tier maker that shows us who the big dogs are. So because I had to go research it all, I'm gonna be cheating and looking at my phone in the notes tab for uh, every team's stats over the decade so I can do this properly. And of course, if you haven't used Tier Maker before, this is what it's gonna look like. I've got five tiers here. The top tier is the very best teams of the decade. Then we've got great teams, respectable teams, average teams, and those teams down the bottom who had a terrible decade. So guys, I'm gonna get straight into it. It looks like it's in alphabetical order as they so often are. Uh, let's start with the Adelaide Crows. Now, they didn't win any spoons during the decade. They made finals four times. They made top four twice. And, of course, they made one grand final. Their best finish was in 2017, where they finished top of the ladder, but got pumped in the grand final. Their worst finish was 14th. I'm going to start off and say that is a fairly average decade, or is it respectable? Um, I don't... <laughs> I've been stumped by the very first one. I'm going to say... Average for now, no, I'm going to say respectable for now, and then we'll come back to it because we need a frame of reference once you move through some other teams, we'll get a much better feel of what's average and what's uh, respectable. Now, Carlton, of course, had two wooden spoons during the decade. They only played finals three times in the first half of the decade, no top four finishes, no grand finals. The best they did was 2011, they came fifth and uh, bundled out in the semi-final to my boys. Their worst finish was, of course, 18th with their two flags. I'm going to say they were one of the sides that had a terrible decade. Now, let's look at the Collingwood Magpies, another team with uh, no spoons. They did play finals five times, which is very impressive. They made top four three times. They, of course, made three grand finals for one premiership. Um, and it's, yeah, they just scrape in with that 2020 fla 2010 flag. Um, their best finish was obviously winning the premiership. And the worst they did was finish 13th. So it didn't make the bottom four at all. I think Collingwood qualify for a great decade. Essendon now for me. Uh, they, of course, had that one spoon with the Asada debacle. Uh, they made finals four times for, obviously, zero finals wins, no top four appearances, no grand final. They never finished higher than seventh. Uh, overall, I think they qualify to be our first average team. The Fremantle Dockers, I think, will have done better than a lot of people will remember because they're not going so crash hot right now. People forget that they've put together a fairly respectable decade, and that's probably where I'm going to put them because they didn't win a spoon. They made finals five out of ten years, top four three times under Ross Lyon, and, of course, made the grand final once. Their best finish in the regular season was first. They uh, got knocked out in the prelim that year, and their worst finish was 16th. I think they qualify to be respectful with the Adelaide Crows. Next up is the Geelong Cats, and this sort of decade kind of caught their tail end of their really, really dominant period. They did win a flag during this period. Uh, they made top four seven times, which is incredible, and nine finals appearances out of ten. They only missed the finals once when they finished 10th. They probably qualify to be... Ooh, is it going to be controversial? I'm going to say great for now, but I might come back to it looking at some of the other teams because I feel like... There's other teams that will just be ahead of them because they want an extra flag. Gold Coast Suns, this is the easiest pick of the lot. They've won two spoons in their era and uh, obviously no finals appearances. Their best finish was 12th. Uh, they are the quickest decision for me. They, are, they have had a terrible decade. By contrast, their younger brother, the GWS Giants, the other expansion side from this decade, uh, other than winning two spoons in their first two years, and it's kind of funny to think that the both expansion sides have won two spoons each, despite one doing a lot better than the other. Uh, but GWS, of course, have played finals four years in a row. They've made the top four twice, and of course, in 2019, they made their first grand final, although, you know, maybe they probably shouldn't have bothered. I think, as far as I'm concerned, they qualify to be respectable, but have never really been a true, absolute contender. 
for anything higher than that. No flags. They can't be great. They have had a respectable decade, which is phenomenal considering they are an expansion side. To think they've had a decade that they have, that is a massive success for them and the AFL in general. Hawthorne. This may not surprise you. They have won a three-peat and thus automatically just have to be considered the very best. They've also played finals nine times, only missing in 2017, I think it was. Like Geelong, they've made top four seven times uh, and played four grand finals, never finished lower than 12th. Um, and that was the only year they missed the finals. They are, of course, the very best team. The Melbourne Demons have had a sorry state of affairs this decade. They haven't won a spoon, which is a plus in itself. They made the finals once, finished ninth, obviously, in uh, 2017, I think it was. Their best finish was fourth, because technically uh, they made it to a prelim in 2018. Their worst finish was 17th. That's a pretty terrible decade. I don't know if I'm going to change that in case anyone else comes up as being worse than that. Um, it may maybe cause me to reframe it, but I think as far as I'm concerned, that's a very terrible, very terrible decade. St. Kilda is a funny one, having won a spoon, but also having made it to a drawn grand final and replay uh, in the same decade, which is weird. They've obviously finished top four in this decade, uh, but only made finals twice overall. Their best finish was runners-up, and their worst finish was 18th. So they're all over the place. I'm going to say average for that reason. They haven't been as bad as the teams below them because they've had a bit of success, but overall can't really be considered anything more than that. Now, let's have a look at another very successful side. I'm talking about the Sydney Swans, another side that has made finals 9 out of 10 years, only in 2019 missing the finals. They've made top four, twi uh, four times, rather, three grand finals, and one premiership over the Hawks in 2012. Obviously, their best finish was first, and their worst finish was 15th, the one year they didn't make the finals. I don't have them as the very best, but they're as good as those other teams uh, in that category with Collingwood and Geelong, super consistent, one of the most respectable big clubs in the competition. Here we come up to the West Coast Eagles, and it is now, for the first time clicking with me, that this isn't totally alphabetical. For some reason, we've got four sides behind the Eagles and Bulldogs, but I'm just going to power through it. The Eagles had a very up and down uh, decade when you consider it things. They're the only side to win a spoon and a flag in the same decade. They won one spoon in 2010. 2018 won the premiership to make finals seven times this decade is a very good effort considering the way the decade started they've made top four three times and had two grand finals winning one and losing one i'm going to say they qualify as a great team this decade because they've hit the top they've made finals consistently and top four as well they do have the blemish of the wooden spoon but overall it is a lot better uh, I think once you win a flag, you qualify as being better than respectable, just about. Mind you, I say that, and I come up to the Bulldogs now, who have made finals four times this decade for no spoons. They've made top four once. Um, in fact, I don't think they actually qualify for top four. I think that the year they won the flag, they won it from seventh. Oh, no, that's not true. They won they made the top four in, like, 2010 or something. So the year that won the flag, they didn't even come top four. Uh, one grand final appearance, obviously, and their worst finish was 15th. Oh, is this controversial? I'm going to say, it, whoops, did I accidentally put them in average? I'm going to put them in respectable just because they haven't had the same consistency of performance over the decade. They've been up and down. There was a really bad period for them as well. Uh, had they made finals a few more years like the, the Eagles and Sydney and all those teams, then I'd probably put them into a great decade. Um, it's weird. They're probably going to be the only team that win the flag that doesn't have a great decade for me. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about that one, because that one is a little contentious. Here we go with the Brisbane Lions, a club with a very proud history. They won one spoon in this decade. They've only made the finals once, though they did make top four. They finished second and finished uh, out in straight sets in 2019. So they ranged from second to 18th, but only one finals appearance. They, for me, qualify as a terrible team because it wasn't that long ago that we were talking about them as though they were Gold Coast and we were talking about how dire the situation for Queensland football was. Then suddenly Lockie Neal comes over, the rest of the list gets better, and now they're considered a very strong side. But let's call it what it is. This decade for them was an absolute disaster. Next up, we have North Melbourne. Zero spoons, four finals appearances, no top four finishes, but they did come fourth after finals in 2015, going from 8th all the, almost all the way to the grand final, uh, losing to the Eagles in Perth. Their worst finish was 15th. Not a whole lot to write home about, but North are a plucky side. They've been competitive 
most seasons, they've never really been one of the worst sides in competition. They're, they're a side with character, and that's something I really respect about them. But overall, their track record doesn't suggest anything enough to lift them out of average. So for me, they go with Essen and St. Kilda in that section. The second last club we've got is Port Adelaide. They have had... Uh, Oh, not a great decade when you think about it. Another club that's got a proud history. They didn't win the spoon, but I think they finished 16th one year. Uh, their best finish was third after finals. Um, that was because they made the prelim in 2014, but though they finished fifth. So technically no top four finishes. Um, so three finals appearances in 10 years and not much else to show for it. They certainly qualify for average. They're not terrible, but they're also behind North Melbourne and Essendon and even St. Kilda. They, but they'll go in that same section as average. So, for whatever reason, we're left with the Richmond Tigers last, because that's the order that it's gone in. They've actually had a very good decade for a side that we probably didn't show enough respect to before they won a flag. They didn't win any spoons. Uh, they avoided the spoon in 2015 narrowly, finishing 15th, but they've made finals six times. They've made top four three times. They're one of only two sides to win more than one flag in this decade, and they made two grand finals, obviously winning both of them. For me... They qualify to be one of the very best, even though they may, didn't make finals as consistently as even some of the sides in great. The fact that they've plucked two premierships at the end of the day, that is what it's all about. For me, they've turned it around after a bad start to the decade. They qualify with Hawthorne as one of the very best teams throughout that period. So there we have it, guys. I'll go through the list again. Hawthorne and Richmond take out the mantle as being the two very best sides of the decade, followed by Collingwood, Geelong, Sydney, and West Coast as the other big teams of the competition. In respectable, you've got Adelaide, Fremantle, GWS, and the Bulldogs, and then the teams that had average decades, I, in my estimations, Essendon, St. Kilda, North Melbourne, and the Power, and then four clubs I determined had a terrible decade were Carlton, Gold Coast, Melbourne, and Brisbane. I'm fairly comfortable with that assessment, but like always, I will ask for your opinion in the comments. Let me know what I got wrong. I'm sure I probably made a factual error in there somewhere. I averaged one per video, but it would be great to hear from you guys. Let's get a bit of a discussion going. What do you think I did right, and what do you think I got wrong? As always, guys, I also want to hear what kind of tier makers and videos you want me to do in the future. This was actually really fun. I enjoyed it and would love to do some similar stuff for future content. As always, say, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe to True Footy. Otherwise, I will see you somewhere on YouTube very soon. Cheers, guys.